to turn to our next big trial. This is the Missing Mom Conspiracy Trial for Michelle Traconis. Trial is scheduled to begin on Thursday, and we're going to bring it to you live here on Court TV. Traconis is charged in connection with the disappearance of Connecticut mother of five, Jennifer Dulos. She fan vanished in 2019 during an ugly divorce and custody battle with her husband, Fotos Dulos. The trial was supposed to start today, but was pushed to Thursday because of the dismissal of an alternate juror. Let's take a look back at this case against Traconis and her connection with the missing mom's husband. On Friday, May 24th, 2019, Jennifer Dulos dropped her five children off at school and returned to her New Cannon, Connecticut home, never to be seen again. Around seven o'clock that evening, Dulos was officially reported missing by friends and family. Startling with five children, that's really, really, really disturbing. Once police arrived at her home, they followed a trail of blood from the garage to Jennifer's SUV, abandoned at a nearby park, and a massive search was on. While investigators searched, they discovered evidence pointed to a contentious divorce and custody battle between Jennifer and her luxury home building husband, Photos Doulis. I am afraid of my husband, Jennifer said in court papers. I know that filing for divorce will enrage him. I know he will retaliate by trying to harm me in some way. The only thing I have to say again, uh, for one more time, is that my only concern are my children. I care deeply about them and I can't wait to be with them again. After the discovery of surveillance video showing Fotis and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, discarding items the evening of Jennifer's disappearance, police began zeroing in on Jennifer's estranged husband. I hope for her, for her family, something, you know, she gets found or there's, I don't think there, there can ever, ever be closure, but I hope there is some resolution. Investigators brought in photos and Michelle for interviews. Following the interviews, a note was found during a police search of Fotos' home detailing a timeline. That timeline matched details his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, had given police in an interview recalling the day of Jennifer's disappearance. I hold the paper towel, but I didn't smell it. I didn't see the... Police interviewed Traconis a total of three times, getting conflicting information in each interview. He gave me a piece of paper, or a toilet, um, a paper towel, and I put it inside where I had the bag of cleaning, the, what I was cleaning, the house. Although police have not recovered the body of Jennifer Dulos, on June 1st, less than two weeks after her disappearance, Dulos was arrested. As you know, Mr. Dulos was arrested today and charged with three counts, murder, felony murder, and kidnapping. Um, Michelle Traconis was arrested. Three weeks after Photos Dulos was charged in the murder of his ex-wife, Jennifer, he died by suicide. They could see through a window that Mr. Dulos was sitting in his vehicle and he had obvious signs of medical distress. Now, Michelle Traconis faces trial for conspiracy to commit the murder of her boyfriend's estranged wife, Jennifer Dulos. She's pled not guilty of the charges and claims she was unaware of what Photos was doing the day Jennifer disappeared. Now, the victim's family hopes that this trial could shed new light on locating Jennifer's body. And Ted, this is uh, such a big case. I'm going to be traveling to Connecticut to cover it. Everyone in Connecticut has been focused on this. Her body has never been found. And so there are a lot of questions. Hopefully, maybe people can get some closure in this case or some sort of resolution. We will see. But meanwhile, let's bring in from New York trial attorney and civil rights attorney Richard St. Paul. Richard, some of the things that have been talked about in this case is this language barrier by the defendant. And when she was questioned, she was giving some, given some um, information. Then she was responding, and she gave some conflicting reports of what took place. But maybe that language barrier is a problem. Defense attorneys can use that what are, what are you seeing so far as this case just is going to start to get underway on Thursday always like in a prosecution I always like to have the body right because the body also tells part of the story uh, so that's kind of going to be an uphill battle uh, for the prosecution is you know well there's no body and if there's no body there's no forensic evidence there's no DNA there's nothing near it that helps connect uh, 
uh, Duke, uh, excuse me, uh, Tacanus uh, to the murder. So this is a going to be a very circumstantial case. Now the the defense have, has already uh, been able to knock out the phone uh, information because the police searched uh, Tacanus phone without a, a warrant. So that's obviously a, a win for the defense and a loss for the prosecution for so whatever was on the phone. But this is a this is definitely an uphill battle and, and it's gonna require a lot of circumstantial evidence. I'm, I'm sure the uh, the family of, of Mrs. Uh, Dulos uh, sees this as the only opportunity uh, for justice for their daughter. But again, there's still a lot of pieces to connect to, to show that there was, a, there was an active uh, an overt act by uh, Tricanos to murder uh, Mrs. Dulos. And clearly, Folos Dulos was uh, the person behind this, according to uh, the state. He's dead. Um, now, this is the only chance for justice, if you will, for this family. The other part of the equation is that body. And I'm sure that family uh, would love to know what really happened. And if she does know, um, one would think at this point a deal might have been offered to her in exchange for information, uh, you know, something, because this is one of those cases where, to your point, uh, Richard, it's not a slam dunk for the state. And um, for the family, if you're going to really want as much information as you can. And if she knows something, one would think that would be a pretty good, but here we are, obviously no deal's been made. Right, so no no deal's been made here, and uh, whether or not there, there has been an offer um, on the table, we don't, you know, that's to be determined. But again, if you are truly innocent, then you're, you're, you're likely not going to want to make a deal. Uh, it, because any deal here will require her to spend time in jail for a lengthy period of time. Uh, and so if you, if you, working with your defense team, believe that you have a, a strong case that you can present and you're innocent, you're going to take that shot out, out there. And again, I, as I said before, this is a lot of circumstantial evidence. Um, and, to, you know, and, and also just the, the police interview, the language bar barrier, that's something that is going to be mitigating factors to the jury saying, hey, you know, she didn't really understand what, what, she, what was saying. Uh, she wasn't really sure. She didn't know her rights. Um, and, and certainly... Uh, she was nervous, you know, all that's going to play as part of the defense as to why they were conflicting the stories. The defense is always going to want to explain away things that the prosecution says that the prosecution wants to hang their hat on. Do you think we could see her take the stand in this case and she could easily pin it on her ex-boyfriend? We could obviously see that happening. Certainly. You know, the, the times that people, that defense, uh, defense, uh, the, well, the defendant, I should say, takes the stand and defense wants the defendant to take the stand is typically when there is a story that only the defendant can tell. And here it is likely that only the defendant can tell the story. For example, you know, I didn't know that what he was, I didn't know that he was dumping things into the trash bag, uh, which could have been, we don't know what it was, could have been different evidence, uh, could have been body parts, could have been DNA, things like that. Uh, but she had no idea what that was when he was dumping it, dumping that inf that stuff into the trash can. That's certainly something only she can say uh, that you know she didn't know anything about this, that she had no idea what he was doing, uh, and that she wasn't involved. So I think that's certainly something that the jury's going to want to hear as her side of the story. And of course, there's a double-edged sword because the prosecution has the ability to then cross-examine, and if she's not very well prepared for this, it may the prosecution may trip her up and it may hurt her. Yeah, and that'll be a um, last-minute decision, obviously, from the defense whether to throw her on the stand. Because, let's face it, it's a difficult case, and if you are making inroads on cross-examination, uh, it's not worth the risk to throw her up there if you think that uh, you've been able to establish. that There's not a lot of, there's not a ton of evidence, and you know this case better than I do, Kelly, but this seems like one where there's an opening it, for the defendant. Well, and it's... Supposedly they did, if she w was to take the stand, supposedly they did make multiple stops on that day when they were throwing away trash, or even if she just threw one thing away. There were multiple stops made. That's according to some reports. Of course, that information is going to come out at trial. The prosecutors are going to flesh that out. But if she did take the stand, you would ask her, okay, so why did you make right. multiple stops at these various well, you're not asking you know, questions. trash what are cans doing? Yeah. across you know, the city? I mean, that doesn't make sense. That's a little bit odd. Yeah, and right. not having... Avoiding her answering that question is probably yeah. good for the defense. Uh, correct, Richard? Well, it, 
Yeah, well, one thing I think is the way you can kind of explain it away is uh, Mr. Dulos was involved in construction. And so mm. he said he said that, listen, it's, it's a pain to get rid of this stuff. I'm involved in the construction. I got to get permits and stuff. So it's easy if I just take this stuff and throw it into the garbage rather than getting permits or paying to have this stuff, this, stuff, this construction material uh, hauled away. So that could be explained away. Right, and she and yeah, you're right. And then she can say that that's what he told me. It was mm -hmm. just construction material. Fascinating case. Kelly's going to be there, yeah. and we'll all be watching.